Hey guys, Duke Blue 1987 here again, bringing you part two of this Egypt game versus Thrasher's Aztecs. And as promised, we've got some horse wars coming up, so hopefully it'll be exciting for you guys. See right here, I'm uh, basically just trying to own this hill and uh, putting a lot of uh, archers, and I think there might be a warrior on the hill too. Uh, for those of you that don't know, if you're outside a city, and the opponent attacks you, it'll always attack a unit that is defending before it attacks your offensive unit. Uh, it's a little bit different in a city. In a city, it's always going to take the highest defense value, no matter what type of unit it is. So when you, your opponent is coming to attack you, you always want it to be outside your city if possible. That way you can defend with warriors and archers and then counterattack with your offensive units uh, because if it's in a city your opponent's going to attack your highest uh, defensive value unit which uh, many times is your offensive uh, army so you can see here thrasher just brought over three horse armies and uh, it's a little concerning considering i only have one it does have blitz though but since he's attacking me and I've had plenty of time to prepare, um, I still have a chance here. So basically right now I'm just switching all of my cities to gold except for the uh, two cities up front. I'm going to keep on hammers so that I can get some archers out every turn. Thrasher is uh, gaining a little bit of an advantage here because while I'm working gold and hammers, he is, I would assume, he would be teching up the Code of Laws. So even if he doesn't end the game here, take or at least take a couple of my cities, he's, uh, he's still gaining an advantage just by uh, pressing me with those three horse armies. And you can see my little uh, pop-up there. I'm, uh, yeah, there we go. One or two turns, one turn away from uh, getting my great person. And I get an artist, which uh, is a little bit lucky. Um, kind of counteracts the uh, seven cities that uh, Thrasher got in the early game. I'd still rather take the seven cities, but definitely uh, a bonus but he as you can see he didn't know I had those units there um, I could see him because of the hill but as he moved he quickly retreated when he saw the defense that I had So now what I'm about to do is I'm going to uh, move my archers up um, and try to, and then I'm going to defend with them. That way I can try to kill one of his horse armies here. Looks like he just got an upgrade. Looks like it was March actually, which let him attack again, which was kind of unlucky. But no worries, I have plenty of archers to spare here. So if you move an archer onto a tile and you flip between them and defend them, um, it counts as them defending this turn. So if he was to attack first there, he would have killed another archer. But instead, I kill a horse army, so that's one down. Um, here's where the uh, blitz comes into play. I'm, uh, after he attacks here, I'm able to move my horse army away after he attacks or after I attack excuse me so now it's nice and safe if I hadn't had blitz it would have been a button race to get my horse army away from his army or possibly I would probably yeah I was wounded so I would have been wound moving away so uh, blitz took that uh, the button race out of the equation So I actually sped, um, kept this at normal speed because um, I thought it would be kind of cool for you guys to see. 
the horse battles and didn't want to uh, speed it up and skip through anything. Uh, I'll be speeding this up a little bit later. <clears throat> but I'm going to let me know what you guys think. I uh, think that if I put the exciting parts in normal speed and keep kind of like the expanding or start of the game in two times speed, I think it'll uh, kind of speed up the videos but still uh, be entertaining. If you guys would like it w a different way, um, yeah, just let me know because it's not that hard to uh, edit these. So I'm gonna, I think I put an archer in that city there, that way if he attacked the city, uh, he would lose his movement for the turn. <coughs> And that's exactly what happens. And because he has no movement, I have plenty of time to flip this city and grab a horse army for him. So that artist definitely came into play. And uh, yeah, right here there's a little bit of a pause in the game because um, Thrasher actually, we had a little conversation because uh, we were unsure why I had movement from the horse army that I flipped since it had no movement, but I guess uh, when you flip a city, you regain movement. But it, it only had one movement, so that's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we're talking about right now. That's why nobody's really doing anything. But after that, he moves away, and I was going to try to put a couple archers up there and then try to attack his horse army, but he was too fast. So, uh... Yeah, I successfully uh, defended against the horse army, got a little, or the three horse armies, got a little luck with the great artist, but uh, I think I probably would have been okay. It, it would have been close. I don't know if he would have been able to break through without the great artist. Probably would have been a button race or two. So now i uh switching everything back over to science and try to catch up because he's already at Code of Laws, uh, probably expanding through those couple turns and uh I have three turns to tech Dakota laws. You can see I move my horse army down there. I'm a little worried he's gonna bring his last horse army around uh down um from Moscow and uh I don't have much defense down there so a horse army could really do a lot of damage. Uh that's why I move my horse army down there. Looking back, it might actually have been a better idea for me to put my two horse armies on a boat and go attack him. Um, kind of hard to say without actually doing it, but I think I might have been able to take a couple cities. Um, but I opted for the more defensive move, and uh, yeah, there's a galley down there. I wasn't. Sh I think it act that might actually have a horse army on it. But uh, I kind of like my setup here. I've got plenty of map to expand from. Um, I don't see him coming from the right side of the map uh, because it's all, unless Tilly gets navigation if he texts it. Um, so don't really have to defend that side of the map. So as you can see, I sped this up again here. Um, nothing too exciting happens. Now for those of you that are uh, interested in learning how to expand, uh, this is definitely worthwhile watching because I get a lot of cities out in a short amount of time. So there's uh there's basically I would say the two key points of this game are aggression and expansion. Definitely want to get units to your opponent um if possible because uh 
it really slows them down. Um, example, like one of your horse armies can attack any of their cities, so it's hard for them to defend all of their cities. So ju just a couple units even can uh, make them build archers and waste hammers that could have been used on settlers. I really don't do that good of a job of it that game. I get this galley over to his cities, and uh, I think he thought I had an actual maybe archer or horse army or something on it, because I think he built a couple archers. Um, I I only had the militia, so but even small things like that, if you can make them waste, you know, 20, 40 hammers, that uh, you know that's a couple cities that gives you an advantage. And then uh, yeah, the second uh, key aspect is expansion. Um, no secret, at least in the uh, from the better com players in the community, that the more cities you have, the better off it is. And the more cities you have, the easier. It easier it is to defend those cities so you can just work gold for a turn or two if you need to and then you have the flexibility to put units everywhere and if you have say 15 cities and your opponent takes one or two it's not that big of a deal if you have four cities and your opponent takes one or two you probably just lost the game so don't be afraid to uh, put out cities and um, you don't have to defend them all you can you have to kind of use your head and think where is my opponent most likely to attack me and then you can use scouts and chokes and uh, even against the better players it's it's really n hard to be <coughs> unpredictable in this game just because it takes units so long to get across the map that uh, if you go the long way it might be a little bit more unpredictable but the game might be over by the time you get there so basically what I'm doing here is working a little bit of gold and pushing out as many settlers as I can as fast as possible. Uh, I kind of predicted that this game was going to end in a race to industrialization and then Oxford. Uh, industrialization is widely considered the most important tech in this game, uh, at least the first to uh, research bonus. What it does is gives you five gold per turn uh, for each city that you have uh, so if you have 20 cities that's 100 gold a turn which uh, adds up very quickly uh, especially if you're in democracy you get 50 percent on top of that and uh, another reason it's so important is because of the wonder oxford university uh, and what that does is if industrialization is your highest tech and you build oxford university you will 100% of the time uh, be granted the tech advanced flight which gives you bombers and at that stage in the game uh, your opponent is nowhere near flight and you pretty much won the game at that point considering you're getting you know 100 gold a turn and you get to build bombers so nothing your opponent can really do it's uh, a little bit I shouldn't say a little bit it's a lot overpowered but uh, there's nothing really do about it so it's uh, pretty much uh, negates the mid game a lot of times and it's a lot of times it's a race to industrialization but uh, this video is coming to a close uh, thanks for watching uh, give it a like if you enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to uh, part three of this game and uh, the conclusion to uh, see who wins. See you later, guys.